police commissioner. The murdered girl's valise is... Suitcase was brought in exactly as it was, Chameleon. She must have been packing it to move to Julian Ford's house when she was murdered. Yes, uh, so I gather, Commissioner. Yes. Enough, Commissioner, I've already found it. But uh, not among her clothes. Oh, I... oh, excuse me. Police Commissioner speaking. Chameleon, Lieutenant Dale calling. Oh, oh thanks. Lieutenant Dale, you're calling me. You found it, eh? Yes. Yes, go on. And Dale, thank you very much. Uh, did you check on what I asked you to? Yes, Mr. Chameleon, and you were right. The landlady, Mrs. Krebb, who runs pawn shop next door to Jennifer Gray's rooming house, has a police record, sure enough. I thought I recognized her. Five years ago, she was arrested for using her pawn shop as a fence. She was charged with being a receiver of stolen goods. She stole the girl's room. Looks like the stolen bracelet. Great Scott. The young Mickey Collins, who was in love with Jennifer Gray, said she had discovered something and was terrified. Mr. Chameleon... Jennifer would go to the police. And maybe she'd the stolen bracelet in the murder room to make it look like Jennifer Gray was a thief. Dave, I'm sure to get the proof. What kind of a disguise, Chameleon? I'm going to become temporarily Caleb Watson. I just arrived in town. And uh, this will be the voice of my disguise. Bye, uh, Dingo. <clears throat> sure feels mighty good to be down here in New York. Well, they're always talking about them uh, smart city slickers. A meter two up our sleeve. Yes, sir. Hey, that's great, Chameleon. You want me to get all the suspects down here, Mr. Chameleon? No, that won't be necessary. Dave, I want you to make... I'm going to pay a visit to that pawn shop of Mrs. Hester Krebs, disguised as Caleb Watson. And... <laughs> And some time later, we see Mr. Chameleon, disguised as Caleb Watson, entering the dingy little pawn shop. The voice of his disguise says, You, um, Mrs. Crabb, lady who owns this pawn shop? No, ma'am. Uh, my name is Caleb Watson. I'm Jennifer Gray's uncle. I heard about her being murdered. Jennifer Gray was, was your niece? Yeah, she and me. Mrs. Crabb, I, uh, I come to claim something that belonged to Jennifer and, uh, uh, the key to her safe deposit box. A key? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, now, maybe you're changing the little racket you're running here. Jennifer called me yesterday saying she, uh, found... What? You must be crazy. Well, now, I, uh, I could go to see the key you stole from Jennifer's room and I won't. I haven't got any key. I... Yeah. I'll be back. Oh. Sorry, mister. Didn't see you standing in the doorway. Why don't you watch where you're going? Well, said I was sorry, didn't I? Dingo? What about that key, Mrs. Krebs? Mr. Ford, I don't know what that old fool was talking about. Don't I... lie to me. Mr. Ford, you're, you're joking me. Answer me. What have you done with that key? I can't breathe. Uh, now, take your hands off her throat, Julian Ford. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, it's you. You came here in disguise. Mr. Chameleon, oh, Mr. Chameleon, you saved my life. Were you trying to commit a second murder, Ford? Killing Jennifer Gray wasn't enough, I tell you. What? What the devil are you talking about? I suspected you of Jennifer Gray's into the trap I set for you when Detective Arnold telephoned you and asked you to come here. Why, you're insane, Chameleon. Jennifer Gray was my friend. She was also the daughter of Tom Gray, a man you defrauded 20 years ago when you jumped his claim to the Queen Anne Copper Mine. After a mysterious accident Mission. from an old newspaper in the bottom of the murdered girl's suitcase, also from some papers in a safe deposit board, the newspaper told of Tom Gray's death at the mine, and the paper in the safe proved that he, and not you, was the legal owner of that fabulous copper mine. Kind old man Julian Ford killed Jennifer Gray? Well, when did you suspect him? My doubts were aroused at his home when he told his nephew, Alan, that I had discovered a cigarette lighter in the dead girl's room. How so that you couldn't have known that it was your nephew's unless you yourself had planted it there. The way Alan planted the diamond bracelet there afterwards to take suspicion. All right, comedian. It's true I killed Jennifer Gray. I had to, to protect myself. A few days ago, Jennifer came to me with certain papers which she, not I, was the rightful owner of the copper mine. I'd have lost everything, everything to her. And she might eventually have even proved that you killed her father. No, no, I didn't kill Tom Gray. That was an accident. If 
but I took over his claim to the copper mine in my own name and made a fortune on it. Institution, but I needed time, time to think. So I invited her to stay in my home. And she accepted, never dreaming that your motive was murder. I was to her room and stabbed her. At seven, I returned with Mrs. Kreb, pretending to discover her body. I thought no one would ever suspect that I, with my reputation for philanthropy, could be in brutal murders I've ever encountered. Come on in, Dave. Put the handcuffs on this man. This is one time when I shall take great pleasure in watching the wheels of justice take their course. <laughs> these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by, based on the original story by Franken and Hummert, directed by Henry Howard, with music selected by Victor Arden. Listen next Friday evening at the same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces in the cust... Tomorrow's daytime listening on CBS Radio features John Reed King's lively give-and-take quiz show and the very competition of Aline Francis, Bill Cullen, and their opposing teams on Fun for All. Every CBS Radio, with give-and-take and Fun for All over most of these same stations. Don't miss a minute of these two delightful daytime... <laughs> Listen for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many pieces, in The Custody of the Child murder case at the same time next week. Hangbusters go into action Saturday nights on the CBS Radio Network.